Okay, I, I like that. And it's called gone. And you're going to realize what that means in a minute, okay? Ben, you ready? Okay, so we're going to kick it off. Y'all ready? Y'all ready?
righteousness of God. Oh, 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 oh. Come on, how many of you are grateful that the battle is already won? That we have everything that we need through the blood of Jesus. We are the righteousness of Christ. We have access to the presence because of his blood. Because of the righteousness that we didn't earn, but we receive anyway. But you're worthy. How great the power of the blood, Lord, that sets us free completely. Thank you, Jesus. We step into our identity as the righteousness. We know that you love us, God. We know that you see everything that we've done wrong, all of our flaws, but yet you love us anyway. You have open arms for us anyway. We're grateful for that, Lord. Come on, I think he's worthy of our praise this morning. So let's sing that out. Worthy of every song we could ever sing, it's the truth. Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you. Come on, can we sing out Jesus the name? Jesus the name above. Every other name. Yes. Jesus, the only one who could ever save. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you.
when you put your trust in Jesus, when you put your trust in his faithfulness, when you put your trust in his promises, no matter the circumstance, no matter how scary it looks, no matter how big it is, no matter how weak you feel, no matter how alone you feel, you shall not be shaken because the arms of the Father are protecting you. They're wrapped around you, holding you tight. No matter the attack of the enemy, it will fall to the arms of the Father because they are blocking. They are blocking every attack, every opposition. The arms of the Father are bigger. The arms of the Father are stronger. The arms of the Father are more. They're more mighty than the attack of the enemy. So therefore, we shall not be shaken. of Jesus and that we have the favor of God surrounding us as a shield that no matter the darkness no matter the valley of the shadow of death Lord we will not fear because you are with us in your presence your presence is the secret to having a life free of fear so we acknowledge your presence right now Lord knowing that you're here in this room that you're fighting our battles
Every circumstance has to bow in the presence of Jesus. So whatever you're facing right now, and I mean whatever you're facing, no matter how impossible it looks, it has to bow in the name of Jesus. So right now, across this place, would you lift your hands with me? And come on, get into your mind right now the thing, the situation, the dry bones, the areas of your life that need to be raised up as we're singing, come Holy Spirit, dry bones awaken. Come on, get those dry bones in your mind. That part of your life that needs a touch from heaven, a touch from Jesus. He's ready. He's at the door. He's ready to come and meet with you. He's ready to answer your need. He wants to answer your need more than you want to pray for your need. So right now, let's take a minute. Father, we lift up every need in this place. Every person that's got dry bones in their life. Every circumstance that seems irreversible, impossible. God, we just expect right now your presence is more than enough to meet every need. There is no room for lack. There is no room for sickness. There is no room for financial hurt. And there is no room for emotional breakdown, depression, anxiety. It's got to leave. It's got to leave right now. God, we expect your presence to blow through this place and meet and answer every single need that we could possibly have. So come on, with your voice, let's lift it up. Let's sing, not for a minute, come on. Not for a minute was I forsaken. The Lord is in this place. Come on. The Lord is in this place. So no be spirit, cry for two. Thank you for releasing your faith with us. And uh, man, it's gonna, it's, it's gonna be a good day. It's already been a good day. Are you glad that you're in God's house this morning? Hey, it's super weird that uh, zero chance of precipitation, but it's still snowing up here uh, behind ours. Did you see it? <laughs> Chicago weather, man, it's crazy. Uh, hey, why don't you take a minute and just say hello to somebody and then you can find your seat this morning. Thank you, team. Appreciate you guys. I want to give a special welcome while everyone's kind of getting situated here. 
Welcome everyone watching online and around the world. Thank you, thank you for being with us this morning. We, we're so glad you're here. We really, really are grateful that you decided to be a part of this experience with us. Lean in today, there's a word that God wants to speak to you. There's no such thing as distance when we're in the presence of God. So no matter where you're watching it from, come on in, be a part of this experience. And hey, I wanna give a special welcome to everyone who may be new or visiting. If this is your first time here, maybe your first time in a while, or your second or third time, you've kind of been checking us out. Maybe it's the new year, you're looking for looking for maybe a place to, to, to kind of get planted and call home. Uh, hey, let me just tell you right now, Life Changers Church is the place to be. And we hope that you would feel at home here. We're just a bunch of happy, imperfect people. That's what we, that's what we call ourselves. We call ourselves the hip church because we're happy and we're imperfect and that's all good. So come on in, whatever you're going through, whatever you've been through, it doesn't matter. Come as you are, you, you can have home here. And uh, so we wanna meet you. There's a card on your seat. If you get a chance today, fill that out. You can drop that in the offering container as it passes or bring it to our welcome lounge. Just right outside these doors after the service, we got a team of people uh, that would love to just meet you and welcome you in person. We got a gift for you, so who doesn't love gifts? Come get a gift before you leave. You don't need to even talk to anybody. Just tell them, hey, I'm new and I'm out of here. And they'll give you a gift. You're good to go. Hey, uh, man, I'm so glad to be with you this morning. Are you glad to be in church with some family? Come on. Hey, I also want to invite you back next week because next week we actually are having a life group expo that's taking place after our services. And uh, man, we believe that we're here to experience God, but we're also here to have community with some people, experience some people. And so we don't want to just do church and then go home and have our lives. So life groups is the way that we have community and build community outside of church. And it's a great opportunity just to plug in a little bit deeper, get a little bit more connected with some people uh, that are here that are going on the same journey as you. So come back next week. You'll find out more about that. You can meet some of our leaders and there's, lead there's groups that meet all over uh, the suburbs, all over Chicago. And so we'd love for you to be a part of that. And hey, who's been enjoying the fast from wrong thinking? Anybody been enjoying that? Come on. We're seven days in. It's day seven. But hey, you can start wherever you're at. You just go to fastwrongthinking.com. You'll hear about that in a minute. Uh, but also with this year's fast, we're doing something really cool. I don't know if anybody listens to podcasts, but you can actually go on your phone, wherever you listen to your podcast, check out the Gregory Dickow podcast. And every day while we're in the fast from wrong thinking, uh, there's going to be content on there every day that aligns with the thought that we're fasting from for the day. There's just some audio content from pastors and his teachings. And I think it's really cool because because we get the emails and we go through the devotion, but sometimes you just need to go a little bit deeper. You need to go a little bit further. And so podcast is a great way to do that. You'll get some more content so you can dive in deeper. But man, it's been awesome. It's been transformational. You'll hear some testimonies in a little bit of how this has been changing lives. So I invite you to be a part of that. And uh, yeah, it's going to be cool. So Okay, hey, we're going to continue in our worship this morning with our giving, and uh, I want to invite Liv to come on up to encourage us this morning, so can you welcome her? Come on. Well, it's good to be here. It's great to be among this family and to just encourage you that you are a part of a family that is alive and that is thriving and is able to do so much because of the giving of this house. You know, we ended 2019 strong, but we are going into 2020 bold with expectation. And what I've loved about entering in this new year is that our pastor set it up for us. We didn't even have to have a New Year's resolution. It was gratitude. And that has really set us up for just a win that we're gonna set our year um, into motion with being thankful for where he's brought us from and then speaking into existence that he is going to do it again because that's what I need, right? Whatever good was last year needs to double this year. And so that's what I'm expecting. I know you are too. So I just wanna encourage you really quickly around a scripture all about gratitude and thankfulness. And it's found in um, 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And in the Passion, which I love. It says, we thank God for giving us the victory. Verse 57, um, right at the end, it says, um, we thank God for giving us the victory as conquerors through Lord Jesus. Now, beloved ones, stand firm, stable, and enduring. Live your lives with unshakable confidence. We know that we prosper and excel in every season. I'll say that again. We know that we prosper and excel in every season by serving the Lord because we are assured that our union with the Lord makes our labor productive with fruit that endures. And I, 
I want to be someone that has a life that's fruitful, right? I know you do too. You want your children to be prosperous. You want your family um, to know Jesus. Well, you know what? Here's how to get this fruitful life is to stay unified in this house serving God. And you do that by being here today, by being online. You're so awesome for those online. We love you. Thank you for tuning in. And we want you to know there's a purpose. And you're a part of the unity here. And um, it comes with serving God. You know, we serve God with our giving, with our time, with our prayers. But he, it's really just a reflex. Thank you, God, for um, saving me. <laughs> Thank you that there's a spot in heaven for me. You know, I was last night trying to get healthy. Um, and eat something good for dinner. And so my sister shops for me because I don't shop well. So she got some strawberries for me, put them in my fridge last week. So I was really excited about eating them last night, except they were all moldy because it's been a week and they were probably like super healthy fruit or something, you know, like from Trader Joe's. And so um, I was so frustrated. <laughs> I don't want that kind of life. I don't want moldy fruit in my life, okay? I don't want anything that has anything that is not from Him in it and that's fruitful and um, beautiful and blossoming. And so let's have, how do we get that? And as our team gives you an opportunity to give towards this fruitful life, go ahead and pass out envelopes, team. Um, how do we get that? There's another part that says here, in every season. So it doesn't say every perfect season or every successful season or every hurting season. No, every season, no matter what you're facing, we are going to excel and we're going to prosper. And we just have to speak it into existence. And then all we got to do is know, number one, that we already had the victory and we just got to stand firm. I want to share this in the message really quick as well. It says, with all this going for us, wow, what a line. You got all this going for you. Um, my dear, dear friends, stand your ground and don't hold back. Throw yourselves into the work of the master, confident that nothing you do for him is a waste of time or effort. That is so good. Nothing is a waste. No seed ever comes back empty. You are never planting, you will never be disappointed when you plant seed because it's the law of seed time and harvest. It will prosper. It will come to pass. Sometimes we think that the garden that we're planting in, that's where we're going to get the harvest, but it comes in surprises. It comes in different waves. It comes from different people, different friendships blossom that you didn't even sow in. You know, we will reap where we don't sow. There's another promise that says that. So how much more when we do? Amen. I'm excited. I want to share this quick testimony. Um, so forgive me for trying to get situated here, but it says, this was from day four of our fast and wrong thinking, which was, I don't feel loved. And this person wrote us, because I want you to know that your giving in this house and in this soil is making a difference. And we are able to reach so many people. And we don't get to share all the stories, but this one I want to share. She wrote in, she said, wow, this thought on I don't feel loved spoke to me so deeply because I grew up with my biological parents separated. I was super young and raised by my grandma who recently passed and uh, passed when I originally got with her. So then I was taken to another relative and then another relative and then back with my mom again. And she was now married to someone else with other children and that void was there. It was finally when I got saved that I felt I was special and I had someone who loved me. And this fast pastor has helped shape who I am today. Thank you so much for having it. How good is that? That is so powerful that somebody across the United States feels loved because your giving is helping us accomplish that, helping us get on podcasts, helping us, you know, uh, have our email system work, constantly helping us to reach through our TV outreach. For however, for those watching online, the giving here and your giving helps make that possible. So we're so thankful. So are you guys ready to sow big today? Yes? You have an area of your life that needs to be prosperous? I do. So why don't you hold your, your giving up. Our online host has already shared with you in the room. You've seen how to give. You know what to do. Hold up your phone. Hold up your envelope. Father, we thank you so much that in this moment, we express our gratitude to you. Thank you for choosing us. Thank you for calling us your children. We are so excited to see what you have for us. We stand in expectation that it's going to be good, that it's going to be great, Father, that you are taking us from glory to glory, and that as we sow, Every envelope that's represented here, every giving, every person in this room who represents your daughter, your son, God, Lord, we expect favor. We expect breakthrough. We expect amazing gates to open before us this week. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Amen. Thank you so much for uh, being here with us and giving our team an opportunity to pass down containers your way. Thank you again for those online. And as Rob had mentioned too, we're so pumped about Fast and Run Thinking. So we got a cool message from our pastor. He'll tell you a little bit more about it. So enjoy. And I'm so glad you're here. Well, good morning, beautiful church family. I'm across the pond in Europe preaching, but I'll be back next week. And until then, you are in for a really, really special treat today. But before that, I just want to say a few words about our 2020 Fast Wrong Thinking. Man, can we thank God for the this beautiful gift and tool that God has given us to change our lives and change the world. And for those of you who may be wondering, fasting from wrong thinking is not a fast from food. You can still eat whatever you want. This is the only fast of its kind where we're fasting from wrong mindsets and mentalities that defeat us. You know, the way we think controls our entire lives, as you've heard me share many times. Our thoughts shape our words, our actions, our futures. Our thought life releases God's potential in our lives or limits us from experiencing his best for our lives. And you know what the scripture says, as a man thinks within, so is he. So I want to invite you into this revolutionary 40-day fast from wrong thinking that I believe is going to be the catalyst for your breakthroughs, as we've been talking about, and a life beyond your wildest dreams. And last week, thousands of people from our, both our church and around the world signed up for our 2020 Fast from Wrong Thinking. It's not too late. The best news is you can do it now. Our team has made it really easy for you to sign up today. And we're approaching nearly a million people who have experienced the transformation and the power of fasting from wrong thinking. And I really want to encourage you to get involved in it and be at all of our services over the next several weeks. It's going to change your life forever. Oh, also, we got these beautiful, um, we got the book, Fasting from Wrong Thinking, along with this beautiful leather journals available in our lobby uh, with the book as well. And I need to jump off now. So please give a huge welcome to the one and only Pastor Grace as she comes up and ministers the word of God to you today. Come on, give her a big hand, everybody. God bless you. I love you guys. Well, thank you so much, and good morning, and welcome to Life Changers Church. He's pretty cute. I think I'll keep him. Um, but no, pastor's in Europe today ministering, and um, I just want to encourage you to do get in on that 2020 Fast and Wrong Thinking. If you haven't signed up for it yet, get in and get involved. It's so easy. It just You get an email every day quickly read it. Um, like Rob said, you can get the podcast. You can drive in your car and just listen to it. It's so amazing. And God's got something good for you this year. This is 2020. It's a brand new year. There's new things that God's doing. So we just want to get you set up for a real win this year. And um, I just want you to know that when pastor goes somewhere, when he ministers, that's all of us going. We're all having an impact on other nations. And when you see pastors show on TV or when you hear the podcast or when you, and, and the social media and all the Instagram and all of that, that's us. He's representing all of us. We're all part of that. And when you give and when you're part of this family, you're part, that's you going out there and preaching the gospel. We get all the credit too. He does all the work. We get all the credit. That sounds pretty good. But I just want to encourage you to know that. So Father, I thank you. I thank you, Lord, that your presence is in this place. And even now, Father, you're just walking around. You're here. Thank you for that amazing moment of worship. Lord, thank you that we're never forsaken, not for one minute have we ever been forsaken by you. Lord, awaken us today to your Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Lord, come and just open our eyes. Be the teacher that you are, Holy Spirit. Teach through me. Be the helper that you are. Help us understand these things. We give our lives to you. We give this time to you. Lord, this is a new day. It's not, it's not yesterday. It's not tomorrow. It's today. It's the gift that you've given us. And in this moment, we want, we just look to you. We expect, we raise up our expectation right now. We look to you, Father. You are the source of our life. You are everything we need. And today, on behalf of this church, Lord, I just thank you that you are present. And I ask you, Lord, to come and, and show up in a way that we can all understand in our own individual lives, the things that every single person needs in this place. I thank you not one of them will, be, will go away hungry. Not one person will go away missing what they need. I thank you you care for every single person that's here and that's hearing my voice right now. In Jesus' name, amen.
Amen. Give God some praise. He's on our side today. All right. Well, you know, to, it's, a, it's a new year, like I said. And you all having a good year so far? You enjoying 2020? That we can see clearly, hopefully, right? We can see some things more clearly than we, we did before. I want to read today out of the book of Luke, and I'm going to start in Luke 15. So if you want to turn there, if you brought your Bible. But my message today is called Lost Things Found. Lost Things Found. Because in this new year, we're all going into some new things, right? God's got new plans for us. We're entering a new decade. But there's things that possibly we lost in that last decade or lost in this last year that were, were sad to us. Maybe we lost relationships. Maybe we lost some work opportunities. Maybe we um, lost hope. Maybe we lost a little bit of our relationship with God where we don't feel as connected to him as we used to. We used to read our Bibles. We used to pray. We used to pray in the spirit. We used to, and it just seems like the fire's gone down. And you know, the Bible says that a dimly burning wick he will not extinguish. And so maybe we lost a little fire. Maybe we lost, now there's some things that we lost that we don't want to find, like maybe those extra 10 pounds or maybe the sickness and disease that God healed us from. And, you know, there is a scripture in the Bible that says if to everything there's a season. And there's a new season right now that we're stepping into. And we have to learn how to walk into the new season and let go of the old season. Sometimes we don't want to leave the old season. We, we live in the past. No, we can't live in the past. we got to move on with God. we got to grow with God, okay? But whatever was lost that, you, that God wants to restore, because he's in the business of restoring, that's what I'm talking about today. Maybe if something that makes you sad, makes you feel like, oh, I missed out on this. I missed... That is what God, he's our compensation, right? He's going to make, up, make it up for us. But there is, in that scripture, it says there's a season, there's a time for love, there's a time for hate, there's a time for peace, there's a time for war. And then it says there's a time to search, and then there's a time to give up searching as if lost. And maybe you're watching today um, from another country, maybe you're watching from another city, uh, you're watching on webcast. You know what, um, whatever has been lost, and maybe there's some things that you lost that God wants you to let go, he'll show you today. But you know those things that deep in your heart, those desires, those dreams, maybe you lost a vision for your life. You feel like not really significant right now. I want you to know God's found you, and he's, he's got it for you. So let's, let's look at this scripture in Luke 15. This is a chapter I love. It's got three parables. Jesus tells three parables, and in every parable, it's about something that was lost. And let me just quickly get here. Everybody, I want to say a quick thank you to our um, snow team, by the way. Everyone who plowed the parking lot for us. All the men that, and women that get out there and help. And with our parking lot team, they are the best. They just are the best. Please wave to them. Be kind to them. They really they, they pay a big price to be out there in the cold for us. But Luke chapter 15. Now, the Pharisees and the scribes, they kept muttering, they were complaining, they didn't like Jesus, they, everybody was coming to listen to them, all these sinners, all these wicked sinners were coming to listen to him. How many is a wicked sinner here today? No, don't raise your hand. Um, and the Pharisees and the scribes kept muttering and complaining, saying, this man accepts and receives these sinners and he eats with them. So he told them this parable, what man of you, if he has a hundred sheep and should lose one of them? does not leave the 99 in the wilderness and go after the one that is lost until he finds it. And when he has found it, he lays it on his own shoulders, rejoicing. And when he gets home, he summons together his friends and his neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, because I have found my sheep, which was lost. Thus I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one wicked person who repents than over 99 righteous persons who have no need of repentance. Or what woman, having 10 drachmas or or coins, if she loses one coin, she does not light a lamp, sweep the house, and look carefully and diligently until she finds it. And when she has found it, she summons her friends and neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the silver coin which I had lost. Even so, I tell you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one wicked person who repents. And then he said, There was a certain man who had two sons. And now many of you know this parable. I won't read through the whole thing. But he had two sons, and his younger son said, Lord, or said, Dad, you know, I'm ready. 
uh, I want to go out into the world, and I want you to give me my inheritance. So not many days later, the younger, man, younger son went out, and he gathered, went on his journey to find his life. The thing is that Jesus said, when you try to find your life, you lose it. If you lose your life, you find it. So not many days later, so he went out, went and he squandered all of his inheritance on loose living. And he went and he hired himself out to one of the citizens of the country So, because he was out of work, out of money, and out of friends. Notice when you run out of money, usually that's when the friends, you know who really are your real friends. <laughs> so he's by himself and he's, you know, got this job feeding pigs. And he's so hungry and he's so destitute and he's so without that he's like, I've just got to eat what the pigs are eating. And that's what he's left to. And as he's sitting there, he's thinking to himself, my God, the guys in my house, my father's house that are servants, they are eating better. They're living better than what I'm living right now. I will arise and go to my father's house. And so he decides to get up, and he walks home, and he gets all, on this journey all the way home. And when he's still a long way off, it says that the father, watching for him, sees him and runs to him and throws his arms around him. It says he fell on his neck. And that term, fall on your neck, it means to hug and kiss repeatedly over and over. He's not thinking about how dirty he is. He's not thinking, I'm so mad at you. you took all that money and wasted it. He's so glad because he knows the value of his son. And so that lost son was found. And it's so beautiful. He's like, give him a robe, the best robe, a sandals for his feet and a ring on his finger. And we really see the heart of God, that he rejoices over anyone who's lost. Listen, if you're lost, you need someone to find you. And many of us are out trying to find our lives. We hear in the world, people are, you know, looking to find themselves, find who they are. What is their calling? Even people who aren't Christians, if you, the number one question, if they were to ever ask God, they would ask, why am I here? What am I supposed to do? Why am I on this planet? And they're trying to find their purpose, find their destiny. And the news I want to bring you today is good news because you have been found. You've been found by God. I know we feel like we found him, but he found you. See, here's what happens. We hear people share the gospel as we grow up. Think back how you got here. Think about people who shared with you. Listen, God has your whole life planned out. He knew you before you were born. And I want to put something out there today that when Eve and Adam... As Pastor shared last week, you know, they took, they didn't believe God had their best interest in heart. And so they were deceived. And that was the sin. They were deceived. So they ate from the fruit. And, we, and they fell, right? The curse came. When Eve and Adam died, we all died. Because we were all inside of Eve. Adam and Eve were the father and mother of all humankind. So we all were there. And I want to challenge you today, and, and I, I pray that you just get, that, that your mind would open up to recognize that you have been known by God. You've been known. You have been found. He already knew you. He planned you. He planned out every day. He knew, it says, before the foundation of the world, Jesus was slain. Before the foundation of the world, he knew you. That's why when you hear me talk today, you hear pastor talk, or you hear somebody share the gospel, you're like, wow, that, it's like exactly what I need, or that's, I'm bearing witness with that. Even when you weren't saved, someone began to share with you. This person or other was going to church. It drew you. It drew you because something used to be alive in you, your spirit. But your spirit's dead. You're born with a dead spirit. But when you get born again, your spirit comes alive. The problem is that now there's something special in you. The Lord's in, in you. You have the Holy Spirit, right? What are the treasures we have in us, right? We have the Spirit of God in us. We have the love of God in us. We have the Word of God in us. We have not been given fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. All these treasures are in us, but they're lost. And we got to find them. They're found by God. He knows they're there. But I want to share with you the way today that you can get those lost things found. Amen? Can you, you want, do you want to hear a little bit about that? I'm just going to get myself situated here so I don't, like, knock anything over. Lost things found. We've all experienced loss in some way, but God can restore us. He can redeem the time. When we seek first the kingdom of God, all the things that we need are added to us. And he's in the business of restoring. And some of us have lost some things. And just want to focus on this for just a second. It doesn't matter how many losses you've had in life. God had loss. He lost his son. Right? He gave his son to the world. 
but he knows how to restore those things that are lost. Time has been lost. Years maybe have been lost. Finances. Maybe something's been stolen from you. Maybe some people that you trusted, you lost confidence in them. Maybe you lost confidence in yourself. Maybe relationships you thought were going to be lifelong relationships, you lost those, and you want those back. That's okay. God wants to restore. He's put that desire there for a reason. Maybe you lost family, lost homes. Maybe your health, maybe your emotional stability you lost. Maybe you lost your temper. We don't want to get that back, maybe. We lost our minds over things. We lost our vision, our destiny, our dreams. We've lost a sense of significance and purpose. And maybe we've lost even our fellowship with God, our connection with him, like I said earlier. But Luke 19.10 says that the son came to seek and to save that which was lost. So if you're lost, you need someone to find you. I remember being in fourth grade, and we went to Brookfield Zoo. And I was looking at the seals, and you have to go underneath, you know. And I'm looking underneath and looking at all them swimming, you know. And all of a sudden I look around and nobody is around in my class. Nobody. And I, I, fear just gripped me and I thought, oh my gosh, I'm lost. And I looked around, I couldn't find anybody. And after about a few minutes, I, came, I just came upstairs and everybody, I found my class. And I just, such a relief came over me. Now I had to figure it out myself. I'm sure they would have come after me. But nobody wants to be lost. And nobody, and the things that you've lost, you desire to have them back. Well, there's three things in this parable, or in this chapter, we learned about that were lost. The sheep and the coin, and the sun. And each of these things represent some different things. But the, the key is, like I said, God has found you. We've all come from broken situation, but he sees the bigger picture. He sees the end from the beginning. He sees the dreams for your life. There's a story that God's writing about your life, okay? There's different chapters. So don't get discouraged if you feel like this chapter was a sad chapter. God's got new things going on. And sometimes you can be at the top of the mountain, but not every chapter is at the top of the mountain. Sometimes you're in the valley, but either way, he's with you, and that's, that's the key, okay? And he's found you. The Christian life is not running after Jesus, trying to keep up with him, but it's rather Jesus saying, hey, you're not alone. I'm taking you with me. He's got you. So, like I said, there's this story that God's written, and you're in the middle of it right now. Don't worry if things went sour or things went bad. God wants those things found. Can I get an Amen. As pastors told us, a good chef will take all the pieces of vegetables, like when you cut off the butt of the celery and the, the carrots and the potatoes and the onions, and yeah, a good chef will take all those butts, like all of our excuses with God, right? But God, but you don't know what they did to me. But God, you don't know how they treated me. But God, you don't know how this felt. But God, this is not fair. But God, this is not enough. But God, I've got to have this. All these butts. He takes them and he uses them and he mixes them up in a nice good pot of soup. He knows how to do that. We just got to stay in the course. We got to stay the course. We think these things are lost forever. So we, we want to give up and we think it's over. It's too late. But if you will recognize that it's not out here that you're going to find your life, it's inside. It's inside of you. And I, I really want to keep, you know, it's, our job is to just trust, allow that trust to, to, to um, grow. So the lost sheep, I think of people that, that um, when we lose our way, the lost sheep, it's like when we lose our way, we lose our path, lose our sense of direction. The lost son represents loved ones in our life that maybe we've lost relationships. Maybe you went through a divorce and it was very nasty and you feel like you lost a connection with your children. God is in the business of restoring. He cares about your kids. And he cares about you. I care about you. You know, you can think of me as sort of like the mother here, because I do. You're all in my heart. I want so much for you. I pray for you. I want you, and maybe you're watching by line. Maybe you couldn't make it today. But God, God, there's a mother side of God, the Holy Spirit. And a mother never forgets what she's given birth to. And all of you are here for a reason. There's a purpose, but the enemy's trying to stop you. And he's trying to subtly turn down the fire to keep you from finding your destiny. It's in you, though, and God's going to bring it about. And that lost coin finally means to me things of value. Um, the Bible says that your faith is like gold. So I think of that coin like my faith. Maybe I lost faith and confidence in God. But I want to get that back. I want to I grow in that. So I want to focus on the one, um, the one thing that 
that this woman really, really honed, I want to hone in on what this woman, she had the lost coin. And she, she really like finds the secret to finding those things that are lost. Are you interested in finding some things that are lost? I mean, the, the parable with the son, it's, it's, I need to point out the fact that he said, I'll rise and go to my father. What he lost was not because, he didn't lose out because he just didn't manage his money right. He didn't lose out, lose everything because he just you know, hung around the wrong people necessarily. His problem started the day he left his father's house. The day he tried to find his life outside of his father's house. So who wouldn't want to come to a father like that? And your father, your heavenly father, he loves you. If you don't hear anything else I say today, I want you to know God loves you. He is that man, that God, that savior that's coming after you to rescue you and to pick you up. You don't have to. Pastor taught in December 22nd, one of my favorite messages, freedom and rest for your soul. There's four things you don't have to do. You don't have to fix yourself anymore. Hallelujah. You don't have to free yourself. Jesus freed you, right? The truth makes you free. You don't have to fill yourself, right? The Holy Spirit comes and fills us with his spirit, fills us with his wisdom. The Bible says there's hidden treasures in you. But the last thing is you don't have to find yourself. And ever since I heard him say that in December, I've just been obsessed with this. Like, I'm found. It's already figured out. I'm found in him. And so this woman who found the coin, she really captures the secret. She did three things, and that's what I want to focus on today. Three things. One, she lit the candle. Two, she swept out her house. And three, she searched diligently. And then when she found it, she celebrated. So number one, we've got to light the candle again. We've got to turn the candle on in our own house. Light your lamp. Psalm 119, 130, the word is a light to my path and a lamp unto my feet. In order to find your purpose and your dream, you've got to open your Bible and look at those promises. Open, I challenge you to open your, every morning, just take 10 minutes and open your Bible. Or do start with the fast and wrong thinking. And just let 10 minutes where you focus on the word, it will change your whole day. Because the word is alive. Yes, come on. Let's give God praise. The word is alive. You feel it right now as I'm talking. You feel it when you're in praise and worship. You feel it when you're around other believers. It's like that light gets stronger and stronger. We've got to light the lamp. It's never outdated. You know, the sun. The sun is never outdated. We always love the sun, right? We can go a couple of days, like even, you know, when it's cloudy or foggy the past couple of days. It's like, man, when the sun comes out, oh, it just feels so good. You never get tired of it, right? You're never like, oh, another sunny day? Come on. No, we love the sun. It produces life. It produces energy. It produces power and warmth. We can't see without the light, okay? We can't read without the light. You can't do your job without light. Light your lamp. Open your Bible. I told the first service, I'm like, I have so many things I want to share with you today. I was like, Lord, I literally, I stopped. I put everything down. And I'm like, Lord, I can't do this. I can't. There's so much here. There's so much. I, it's going to take me three hours to get it all out. And then I thought, well, okay, I guess I'll just do like my first hour with the 9 o'clock service, my second hour with the 1030, and my third hour with the 12 o'clock Chicago. So you'll probably not hear everything I shared at the first service, and I'll probably share more. I don't know, you guys. I'm not as organized as pastor. I don't know how he gets it done. But let's just talk about this woman who found the coin. Because there's something valuable that's lost that God wants you to have not only in 2020 but in this decade. Okay? And the enemy's going to try and beat you up and tell you, no, it's over. It's too, too far gone. No, no. So she, she lights the lamp. Then she sweeps her house. Her coin is in her house. Notice. She, she shuts the door. She, her coin is in her house. She's going to sweep that thing out. And so what you're lacking in life is not missing. It's inside. It's inside you. You just got to sweep out all the mindsets of failure and negative things. I know that sounds so true. Like, I know, I know. Pastor says all the time, sweep, change the negative mindsets. You know, I got to change how I think, you know. Like, wouldn't it be nice to just, if she just said, Lord, could you show me where the coin is? <laughs> Let's make this very easy, you know. But there's something about the search. There's something about the sweep. Remember Pastor told us about Andrew Carnegie, the famous innovator and billionaire. And he had 43 millionaires working for him at the end of his career. And they asked him, how were you able to have 43 men who are millionaires? And they're like, well, they didn't start that way. 
Well, how did you train them? How did you get them to that point? He said, I did, it's easy. It's the same way you mine out gold. You have to move tons and tons of dirt before you can get one ounce of gold. And the truth is, guys, that we get lazy and we don't want to push the dirt. We look at the dirt and say, see, it's not there. I prayed and it's not there. I asked God and nothing happened. Um, If God wanted me to sing in the choir, they would have called me, but no one called me. So I'm done. I'm just going to sit down, hide my gift. Well, the gift's not there. Obviously, you know, we just hide. We, as long as you're sitting on it, it's not helping. The woman who had, remember she, she didn't have, her widow, she was about to die. She has no husband. Her son's being taken away. The prophet says, woman, what do you have in your house? Just this little jar of oil. Guess what? They found tons of vessels. She kept pouring, pouring, and that oil never ran out. It only ran out when they finished the vessels. Listen, it's in you. And you might think, well, it's just a little jar of oil. What do I have to give? I don't have much to offer. That's what you think. you got to humble yourself. Hey, I'd rather be, so maybe you're not on the stage in the choir. What about being a doorkeeper? What about, like, that's just as important. All of us are important. Everything we do for God and for his kingdom is important to him. Who cares? Who sees it? Who cares who gives you thanks? See, there's so much dirt in our lives that we are not willing to push. And so we want to just blame God. We want to just, you know, um, walk away. We want to just kind of be indifferent, just get a little lukewarm. Still going to come to church, but I'm not going to be in it. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to really, I'm just going to kind of check it out. Because we get offended when we don't recognize that it's in us. Well, my husband isn't treating me right. I'm going to divorce him. Because you know what? He doesn't do this for me, doesn't do this for me, so he's no good. I'm out of here. Maybe it's you that's not good. Maybe there's some dirt that you got to push. You're, you're so busy trying to move the dirt in his life that you're not moving any dirt in your life. And so you're not changing, and you're just becoming a big weight. You know? you got to recognize this thing. And we want to change out here. See, we want to fill our lives, right? We want to f- get the, you know, just drink, just smoke, just do drugs, just eat, just be with people, just, um, you know, fill our lives with busyness, fill our schedule. You know, we got to be busy, busy, busy because we don't want to have to face loneliness on the inside. Hey, how about just being alone for a minute and recognizing how beautiful the presence of God is and that you are never alone and you can have joy in his presence, that little jar of oil, the Holy Spirit's in you and he'll never leave you. I mean, I've come to the point where I'm like, Lord, sum up my life is I'm calling myself three men and a girl. Father, Son, the Holy Spirit, and me. That's my life. And I'm so happy. I don't care. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if people come or go in my life. Look, my life's a story. We're chapters. People come and go in different chapters. It doesn't matter. But see, I'm not going to wait and be like, well, that person left my life. Well, I was happy when they were here. Well, I was happy. My husband divorced me or my wife divorced me. I would have been happy if we would have stayed together. That's your problem. You, got, you can't think that way. You got to push that dirt out and be like, no, I have the Holy Spirit in me. I have love of God in me. I have God's destiny in me. And nobody can change that trajectory of my life. No one can interfere with what God says about me. Maybe the boss didn't recognize you, didn't give you the promotion that you deserved, right? You're like, man, that boss, I'm quitting. I'm going to get, you know, move. And I know there's times where you need to make those changes, but are you sure that there's not some dirt that you need to move in your own life? It's easy to move houses. It's easy to get, not easy to get divorced, but I'm just saying it's, it's painful, but you could do that. You can change the outside. You can change, cut the person off. Be like, I'm not going to be friends with you anymore. I'm just going to do, you know. Now, there are some people that you don't need to hang around, people who are doubting you, people who are against you, people who are against your faith. You know, they don't, that's okay. I'm not saying that, look, we're not people pleasers. And you don't have to be everybody's best friend. But we just can't continue to live like the rest of the world. We are the light of the world. We're supposed to be the ones that know who we are, know where we're going, know our God, and know he has a good plan for us. So we're not moved. We're not offended. We're pushing dirt. We're kicking it left and right. Oh, my goodness. we got to push the dirt. There's hidden treasure in there. Isaiah 45 says, I will go before you. I'll make the rough places smooth. See, God's even going to help you do it. I will shatter the doors of bronze. Some of us have bronze doors in our thinking. We've, it's, and the older we get, those, it's harder to change. So you young people, I love you. Thank you. Thank God. Keep changing. Keep growing. Grab a hold. Old people, sorry. 
grab a hold too. You don't need, it's, it's all a mindset, thinking that you're old. Yes, we age. We're all going to age. But we don't have to be old in our thinking. Sometimes we're like, oh, I'm too old for that. I'm too, you know, too tired. Oh, I've got these pains in my shoulders. You know what? Get the dirt out. Speak the word over that shoulder. God has healed you. We have just, it's our mindset. It's the way we think. And so we're used to just looking out here for it. But no, I will shatter the doors of bronze and cut through the iron bars. I will give you the treasures of darkness and hidden wealth of secret places so that you may know it's I. Listen, the Lord, the God of Israel, who calls you by your name. He knows your name. Somebody here today is hearing my voice right now. And you have been crying out and asking God, do you know me? Do you care? Did you overlook me? Did you forget about me? He knows your name. He knows the hairs on your head. He will never forget about you. A mother never forgets. A father never forgets. 2 Corinthians 4, 5, we have this treasure in our earthen vessel that the powers of God, not of ourselves. There's a treasure in us, but it will remain under tons of dirt every day until we learn to excavate and get serious about digging out that purpose and that destiny and shake off the, the procrastination, shake off the lethargicness, the, the slothfulness, to shake off that you know, just our minds that are just lazy and just like, I don't want to have to open my mouth. Just open your mouth and say, Jesus. If all you can say is, Jesus, you can do that. He's one thought away, one word away. And the devil just makes us so happy. He just wants to put you down. He just wants to quiet you down. Just get you really focused on other things rather than with the gold. There's gold. There's a coin in you. God's like, I'm not good with just nine coins. I want that tenth coin. It's in you. You can't be okay with not having the full set of 10. God wants to unearth the treasure in you. So, we've got to be, you know, not make the mistake of believing that our happiness, our joy, our solution, our dream comes from finding um, something out here and moving something out here. That's a mirage. Mary, little Mary, Remember Christmas? It wasn't too long ago. I still have my tree up. I love it. I got to take it down. I'm waiting for Pastor to get home. He put it up. I don't know how to take it down. It's an artificial tree. And um, I'm like, I took all the ornaments off, but I'm going to be like, hi, you're back. Oh, guess what? Yeah, it's still here. I don't care. But Mary, Mary, little Mary, 14 years old or 15 years old, however old she was. So she, the angel appears to her. Listen, he says, there is... You are going to have a son. How? She's a virgin. She's not even married. How in the world is she going to have a son? He said, you're going to have a son. She says, well, how can it be? He said, the Holy Spirit's going to come upon you. You will conceive a child in your womb, and his name shall be Jesus. See, what? something has to be conceived on the inside of you. You have to see it on the inside, to feel it on the inside. It's got to grow. You've got to be pregnant with it before you can give birth to it on the outside. Some of us just want a baby overnight. It doesn't happen that way. I can tell you, it does not happen that way. It's a process. But you have to let it, she said, be it unto me according to your word. See, the greatest thing that she ever was going to give to this world was from within her. What did the prophet say to the woman? Woman, what is in your house? The widow, what's in your house, Right? When the disciples were on the boat with Jesus, remember Jesus said, let's go to the other side? They had God's promise. They had his um, presence. He was in the boat with them. And they had his power. But what happened? The waves started moving and shaking in the dark and the lightning and the thunder. And, and then on top of it, Jesus is asleep. Thanks, Lord. A lot of us feel like God's sleeping, right? We are struggling. We're about to perish. I got to pay my bills. Lord, hello, where are you? And what he was doing is he was showing, he was modeling for them how they need to be through the storm. Anyway, that's another message. But the whole point about it is that they had Jesus in the boat right there with them. I'm telling you, Isaiah, uh, uh, Romans 10, 5 through 10 says, the word is nigh you in your heart and it's in your mouth. It's near you. The woman, you know, with the 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 water at the well, John 4, when the woman, a Samarian woman, Samaritan woman, and she was like coming to fill her pitcher up with water. And Jesus is like, if you knew who the heck was standing right here in front of you, you would ask him for water. Hello, I'm right here. 
We are so trained in our minds, and we're on our phones, and we're on our social media, and, you know, we hide under all these electronics, you know, and we sometimes miss the very thing that's right in front of us. Like, right, the answer's right. It's not always out there. Now, on social media, yeah, you need to watch pastor's Instagram and watch his Facebook for sure. But don't get caught up in thinking. Anyway, that's a whole other story. It's what's in you. You're looking on there to see what everyone else is doing. Everyone else, you know, what about you? There's something in you. The greatest thing that you're going to do is going to come from inside of you. Where did Adam, when God, he's like, I need a helper and none, none of these suffice, where did he find the helper? From right within, that rib, that rib, that beautiful rib. Sarah, look at Sarah. She's like, I've been barren my whole life. I've never been able to give a child, give birth. Abraham, why don't you just go and be with her? Be with Hagar. She'll be the one. It'll come through her. She'll be the one to give you birth, birth your dreams and the vision and the things that God spoke to you. You know, go with her. See, Sarah's thinking, it's out there. It's somewhere out there. I don't want to be the reason why your life is ruined right now. Because right now I feel all this pressure on me. Like I'm the one holding you back from your destiny. Go and do with, be with her. But God's like, no, nope, Sarah, it's going to come from you. You're the one I designated to give birth to the child of promise. See, God has a plan. And she could have just made excuses, made excuses, made excuses. And you know what? God is patient because he waited like 90 years. It was, you know, maybe that's how long it took them to believe. But it wasn't going to happen out there. It was going to happen in her, in her dead, barren, old womb where she thought, I'm too old, it's too late. It's never too late with God. It's never too late with God. Amen. Martha's like, Lord, you're too late. You're too late. You should have been here. Lazarus has died already. It's too late. How many of us in our mind, that dirt in our mind, it's too late. It's too late. It's over for me. You got to push that dirt out. Jesus is like, Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. I'm right here. She's like, I know, I know, I know. I know you said that. I know the one that, you know, blah, 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 with her religion. No, he's right here. The power of God is in you. My, my brother's sick. Someone's sick. I got to go to the hospital. I need pastor. I need pastor to come. You've got the anointing in you. You have the Holy Spirit in you. You have gifts inside of you. You have power inside of you. Why are you waiting for someone else to come? I mean, I, I agree with you. And, and we, I know we need prayer and agreement of prayer. But sometimes if it's just you, hey, it's three men and a girl. That's enough for me. I can do it. I can go in there. I can believe God. God's with me. I'm not alone. I, you might look like I'm alone, but I'm not alone. When the prodigal son lost his inheritance, what did he say to himself? He came to his senses and he said, I will go to my father's house. Because he realized everything I needed was right there. I thought it was out here. I was trying to seek and find myself and find, save my reputation and get away from my family. Because my family, I don't like them. I don't like what they've, you know. So they were just, it's like, you know what? God will take care of you. God will take care of you. And now some, some families, we do need to get away from. I had to break away from my family. I love my family. But I had to make a decision that I can't hide inside of just my natural family, and that's going to be my destiny. I had to know God has a plan for me, too. And whatever he had for me, that I had to see it individually, you know. And that, that's just how God thinks. And sometimes if your family is not, are not believers and they're, or they don't believe in your vision, and then, you know, you don't hate them. You don't break fellowship with them. But you love them, but you have to protect. You have to push the dirt away in your own mind and, and forgive and don't hold any grudges against anybody, but just go after that goal, that faith that's inside of you, that destiny, that calling, that, that power, that future that God has for you, and don't let anybody talk you out of it. I'm preaching too much, sorry. Am I getting too loud? Finally... She searches carefully and diligently. Oh, there's one more person I wanted to talk about. Leah. You don't hear much about her. Leah was, the, remember the ugly older sister that Jacob married and then a week later married the younger sister? And so she's like stuck with this guy. Now I'm married to a man who doesn't love me. The rest of my life is ruined, you know. But guess what? It wasn't because guess what came from her? From her came Judah. And Judah it's the line of the, tri line of the tribe of Judah is Jesus. Jesus came from Judah. He didn't come from Joseph. Now, we all love Joseph. Rachel gave Jacob Joseph, and he saved the world. We all know that. But he married an Egyptian woman, and so his bloodline was mixed. But Judah's line was pure. 
And even, by the way, Rachel, she served other gods too. She hid her idols and she served false idols and she ended up dying, giving birth to their second son and being buried on the roadside because they were traveling at the time. Whereas Leah was buried right next to Jacob with Abraham, with Sarah. In the end, she was the one. I know it looks bad for her. And your life might be like right now, it just doesn't look good for me. But what's in you is the treasure and what she gave birth to. Only God could do. And you will only be happy in your life when you do what God has called you to do. Not what you think you're supposed to do. Not what someone else puts on you or rejects you from. Not when someone else cuts you out of something. That is not your final say. Why are you letting that determine you? Why are you letting yourself be count out? Why are you letting the enemy beat you up? Why are you saying, no, I could never do that. I could never do that. Why are you limiting yourself? Take the limits off and push that dirt away and now search diligently. Search. This is the time. Number three, we got to search. And what does that mean? That means you got to get active you got to not give up what you're looking for. You can't settle for lukewarm anymore. You can't settle for just enough. Or, um, you've got you've to realize Jesus searched after you. Now what are you going to do about it? The answer for you is actually right under your nose. It's your mouth. you got to speak the promise of God. you got to declare the word of God about you. You have to say, I am found I have a destiny. I have confidence because of Jesus. I'm healed because of Jesus. I'm rejected by this person, but I'm loved because of Jesus. I'm cut out of this situation, but I'm included in Jesus' plan. My God, life gets so much fun. It gets so much. Someone's watching me online right now, and you are hearing what I'm saying. I'm telling you, God hears you right now, and you don't give yourself enough. You think you're not hearing God. You hear his voice. You don't give yourself credit. You think it's something else. It's God in you. He's calling you. He's pulling you. He's drawing you. He needs you. He wants you. He loves you. You are his child. He gave birth to you. He knew you before the foundation of the world. He'll never let go of you. Never, never, never. It's worth it to get up off your couch and and just begin to pace the room and say, Jesus, I praise you. Jesus, thank you. Jesus, I receive. There is nothing wrong with me. You know what? It's it's mine. I'm going to own my destiny. I'm going to find that coin. I'm going to move the dirt today. I'm not going to complain. I'm going to stop blaming. I'm going to stop making excuses. I'm going to own it. I'm going to find the coin that's in me. And you're going to how are you going to do it? You're going to light that candle. You're going to sweep out the dirt. You're going to sweep out the dust. You're going to sweep out the negativity. And then you're going to search and you're going to speak the word. You know, there's a promise for every problem. You're going to speak that word. Jesus said, let us go to the other side. Mary said, be it done unto me according to your word, Lord. See, there has to be that confession on our part, that agreement with God. you got to give him something to work with, people. We can't just sit there and expect God to do it. He did everything already. But it takes us rising up and agreeing, agreeing with him and saying, I hear you, Lord. I, I hear you, Lord. I'm going to ditch the passive aggression, you know. We get to be, we, we learn to get our way because we think getting our way is going to make us happy. So what we do, we learn these habits when we're young. And sometimes it goes from generation to generation. But we learn to manipulate emotionally. We learn to use anger to intimidate. Or we use shame to seduce someone into something. To make them feel bad about it. So that they have to do what we say. right? And all these tactics are dirt in your life. And they're not helping you one bit. And you think that you're going to use passively aggression to like, you know, just kind of make somebody feel a certain way. And you think that's going to make you happier. But it's not. I'm telling you, it's when you come to grips. When you come to the grips with how much God loves you. And then how much, how, how empty you are without him. Nebuchadnezzar was walking on his palace, his beautiful Babylonian palace, and all, his, all he had accomplished. And then suddenly was whisked away, all of it fell away, and he was found in the forest for months 
as a beast, living like a beast, and his nails grew really long like claws, the Bible says, and his hair grew really, 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 really long, and he was just like, with all the dew and the, and the moisture of the forest, it was like he was becoming one with the forest. You know what, guys? We were all, came, we all came from dust. All of us. We look beautiful today and glorious because the Spirit of God is on us, and he has been so good to us. Take away his mercy, take away his grace. We are nothing without him. And it was in that moment where Nebuchadnezzar had to recognize, I'm nothing. And he lifts up his eyes to heaven, and reason came back to him. And he said, it's God. It's God who sits above the earth. It's God who gives men authority and power and ability to rule. It's only by God. And he came into his right mind and went back and served as a good king in the latter part of his days. He was good to Daniel. He was kind to Daniel. He saw it. He got, but it took that humility. And that's the thing. We got to be willing to let your life be undone. Let the pride go. Let the stubbornness go. Let it go. Stop fighting. Stop fighting the wrong people. You're, you're siding up with someone who's not even a believer, and you're against your own brother. You're against your own sister. And you're agreeing with people who are not, not even really believers. And you're building case against, and guys, it's the devil's work. He doesn't want us to be united. We are the church. We can do all things. When we agree, imagine if every one of us ditched all of our problems and our issues and just loved each other and loved one another, believed the best, went into the world, believed the best, and was the shining force of light that would restore people. And then we'd see those sheep that are lost saved then we would see, you know what, the, the sons and daughters that God's waiting for. Because on the other side of that lake, when Jesus said, let's go to the other side, there was a guy over there. He was filled with demons. He was running around. No one, they tried to chain him, but he couldn't be um, handled. They couldn't handle him. But that was the purpose, why the, getting through the storm, pushing the dirt, Jesus was trying to teach them, because you got to get to the other side, because on the other side are people who need God's love, people who need God's power, people who need the gold that's inside of you. And they were able to set this man free, and there he was sitting in his right mind, clothed and in his right mind. That's the power of God. Only God does that. So why do we resort to tactics and fleshly power when we have God's power of his Holy Spirit? Gentleness and kindness and love and goodness and mercy, right? That's what makes, that's what we want to be around. And it's in you. We just got to be willing to push the dirt. Are you willing to do that today? Amen. I am too. I'm speaking to myself mostly. So anything I'm saying to you, I'm saying to myself. But Father, let's just stand together and let's make this declaration today. Because out of our mouth, our future comes. Your heart, from your heart comes your future. And out of the abundance of your heart, your mouth speaks. So let's just say, Heavenly Father, thank you for finding me. I don't have to find myself. I don't have to free myself. There's gold inside of me. I make a choice today to agree with your love. You loved me enough to search for me, to die for me, to find me. So I'm answering, Lord. I hear you loud and clear. I own my destiny. I will not look down on myself. I will not allow circumstances to rule me. I make a choice to light the lamp, to turn on your word. Your word is in my heart, and it's in my mouth. And I choose to sweep out the dust, to search diligently till I find that coin, till I find my faith again. Thank you for restoring me today. Old things are passed away. All things have become new. And whatever's been lost is found in Jesus' name. And I'm gonna celebrate. Amen. Come on, let's just celebrate for a minute. Thank God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. So go do that. If you want to get saved or you need healing in your body, you need prayer for anything or agreement, we have our prayer team that's going to be up here that will agree with you. Otherwise, make sure that if you're new here today, you go to the lobby, get your gift, greet someone. We love you guys so much. Pastor's going to be back next Sunday. In the meantime, I want you celebrating every day. Enjoy the fast and wrong thinking. Enjoy the treasures that are in you. You are loved. We love you so much, and we'll see you next time. God bless you guys.